Good day each and everyone, especially to our dearest professor, Mr. Sherwin Sevelia. So today, here's our intended learning outcomes or ILOs. At the end of the session, the MAED mathematics students should do the following. First, is solve direct products in abstract algebra. And second, define generated sets. Again, at the end of the session, the MAED mathematics students should do the following. First, solve direct products in algebra and define generating generated sets. So first is direct product. Direct product is just direct multiplication. However, direct product is used in abstract algebra. So here, to determine if it is direct products, we need to have two groups, G1 and G2. These two groups can be finite or infinite, abelian or non-abelian. The direct product is a way to combine these two groups. So direct product is the way to combine these two groups into a new larger group. It's the set of all pairs where the first component is from G1 and the second from component is from G2. Again, it is the set of pairs where the first component is from G1 and the second component is from G2. So here, direct product G1 times G2 is equals to X, Y, where X is an element of G1 and y is an element of G2. So group operation, we use direct product in group operation. So let A be X, Y element of G1 and times G2. So here, we will multiply that one, A, B, and X, Y. It will become A, X times B, Y. And then the identity element is equals to E1, E2, where E1 is identity element in G1, and E2 is identity element in G2. Example number one, G1 is equals to any integers under positive. And G2 is equals to 1 and negative 1, I and negative I under multiplication. Again, G1 is any integers pos under positive addition. And then G2 is equals to 1, negative 1, I, negative I under multiplication. So if we, we multiply G1 and G2 or direct product of G1 and G2, it is equals to XY where X is the element of Z, Y is, y is equals to positive and negative 1 or positive and negative i. Group operation test, so using group operation test here, example, 7, negative 1, and 3, neg negative 3, i. So we will uh, multiply that one and use direct product. It will become 7 minus 3 because use g1 is z integer under addition. And negative 1 times i because g2 is under multiplication. So 7 minus 3 is equals to 4. Negative i times i, negative 1 times i is negative i. So the answer is 4, negative i. So here is the identity of the element is 0, 1. So for example, 5 negative i times 0, 1. So, 5 negative i, we will multiply with identity element which is 0, 1. So, 5 plus 0 because G1 is under addition and G2 is under multiplication. Negative i times 1, so the answer is 5 negative i. So, it's the same. So, therefore, 0, 1 is our identity element. Just like x, y times 0, 1. So here, x plus 0 and then y times 1. So x plus 0 is x 
And then y times 1 is 1. So, it's the sign. So, therefore, 0, 1 is the identity element of the group. Now, we will move to direct product more than two groups. Example, G1, G2, G3. So, we will di using direct product. So, G1 times G2 times G3 is equals to X, Y, Z, where X is the element of G1. Y is the element of G2, and Z is an element of G3. For example, A, B, C, X, Y, Z. So, here, we will multiply A times X, and then B times Y, C times Z. And then, the identity element of these groups are E1, E2, E3. Where E1 is the identity element in G1. And E2 is identity element in G2. E3 is identity element in G3. For example, G1 times G2 times G3. So, is equals to 3, 5, 6. X is the element of G1. Y is the element of G2. And Z is the element of G3. Again, G1 is 3. G2 is 5. G3 is 6. So, G is equals to 3 times 5 times 6. So, 3 times 5 times 6 is equals to 90. G is equals to 90. <coughs> Note, if any G, I is infinite, then the direct product is infinite. So, if, the one, if one group is infinite, so meaning... The direct product is infinite. So, if all of the group is finite, so therefore, the direct product is also finite. So, generating set. So, we will now move to generating set. Let G be a group and let A is the element of G. We have described the cyclic group which A is generated of G which is the smallest group, subgroups of G that contains element A. Suppose you want to find as small a subgroup as possible that contains A and B for another element B in G. <coughs> we say that any subgroup containing A and B must contain A N and B M. For all M, where n is an element of positive integers <coughs> and consequently must contain all finite products of such powers of a and b. For example, such an expression might be a squared b to the power of 4, a raised to the power of 3, b squared, a raised to the power of 5. So note that we cannot simplify these expressions by writing first all powers. Are followed by powers of B since G may not be a billion. However, products of such expressions are again expressions of the same type. Furthermore, E is equal to A raised to the power of 0. And the inverse of such expression is <coughs> again of the same type. For example, the inverse of a squared, b raised to the power of 4, a minus 3, b2, a5 is a, negative 5, b, negative 2, a3, b, negative 4, and a, negative 4. This shows that all such products of integral powers of a and b form a subgroup of g, which surely must be smallest subgroup, containing both a and b, we call A and B generators of this subgroup. If this subgroup should be all of G, then we say that A and B is generated with G. We, sh we could have made similar arguments of 3, 4, or any number of elements of G as long as we take only finite products of their integral powers. So that's all for today. That's all for direct products and generated sets. Now, this is your evaluation. 
solve the problem using direct products when g i is g1 is z under subtraction and g2 is 1 negative 1 i negative i under division and then find the inverse of x raised to the power of 40 y raised to the power of negative 6 and z raised to the power of 19 don't worry i will post this one in our google classroom so please answer this one so that's all for today thank you and god bless us all